Hey guys, I want to talk to you about one of the most important ingredients in our existence, and that would be love. Love is value of others. It it's puts it puts high, a, another person in high regard. The Bible says we con- should uh, consider others as more important than ourselves. The Bible says, "Love your." neighbor as yourself. Uh, We're to love the Lord our God, value him, hold him in high regard, respect him, focus on him. You know, Spinoza back in the 1600s came out with sort of a a concept of God that was um, not so rooted in personhood as in sort of <clears throat> this intangible uh, power or, or pervasive presence or something. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not doing his concepts justice, but I don't agree with those. I mean, I know God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him. And he said to, to Peter, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, he said, I and my Father are one. Uh, that's where the Judeo-Christian perception of God is a, is a personal one. Uh, and um, therefore, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship with my very own Father. And God sent His Son Jesus with a spirit of adoption to retrieve all of us human beings, not to give us sort of mystery philosophy to kind of spend our lifetime spinning our wheels trying to figure out. But he made it clear. uh, He who knew no sin was made to be sin on our behalf so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. You know, Confucius, Aristotle, and some of the, the great ancients had really interesting perspectives. You know, they were a lot of them were intellectual giants and they were, I respect their seeking. You know, I don't agree with all their conclusions, but C.S. Lewis said, truth is truth no matter where it comes from. Now, I, I think if he were alive today, he wouldn't say the kind of verbiage now that, well, this is my truth. Because really what it takes the beautiful word truth, which is an absolute and says, this is how I feel about things, or this is my opinion, or this is my interpretation of with the, you know, this is the way I, and my truth is as valid as your truth. And your that starts messing with, we, we got <laughs> words, the etymology of words change over the course of time. And, uh, but some of them we, <laughs> we need to hold to, you know, and uh, truth is the opposite of error, you know, of, op- of, of falsehood. It's, uh, um, re- it's reality rather than deception. It's clarity rather than distortion. So God is love, and God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn or judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. You, you know, you're watching this, and I'm going to tell you what I appreciate about Jesus is that he was willing to suffer and die as a substitute to pay for the penalty of our sins. He was the lamb slain before the foundations of the world. And the Jewish uh, framework that that was introduced by a Jewish man to a Jewish community, they would immediately understand because they read in their Hebrew scriptures that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus literally died on the cross for us, and he calls us to die daily, to humble ourselves, to pour out our life on the sacrifice and service of other people's faith. And I, I say all this to say, embedded in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is, this is an in- introduction, and I just have moments with you, but I'm sowing these seeds for the upcoming days that if we don't have love, if we don't have God as the highest regard for our lives, as as a priority pinnacle of our purposes, 
then it says here that we're like a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. Recently, a member of our church gave uh, his uh, a set of drums to my son-in-law's uh, son, my grandson. They have it in the basement. Even though it's in the basement, far away from the bedrooms, you could hear it through the whole house, the clanging cymbals. And uh, if we don't have love, it's just that kind of harsh tone. Uh, but if we do have love, then our life becomes musical. Uh, joy emanates. Wherever we go, people are lifted. Wherever we go, they think about Jesus. They could tell we've been with Jesus. Our prayers matter. Our follow-through matters. Our resistance of temptation matters. And I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to get in 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to read 4 through 8 in the next couple of days, and I believe it will really help you. God bless you.